Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number nine in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to think like an engineer using the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Elite Explorer Kit. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how you can print from the Arduino to your desktop computer screen. Now, why is this important? Well, we're going to be doing all types of interesting things on the Arduino. Let's say that we hook up a temperature sensor to the Arduino and we're sitting, sitting there measuring temperature. Well, we need to display it somehow. So how do we do it? We print it to the serial monitor <clears throat> on your computer screen. And that's going to be what I am going to show you today. Sound good? I hope it does. So I will get out of your way. I will have a sip of coffee. And we will switch over to our IDE view. So I need you to fire up your Arduino IDE. I need you to open up bare minimum. So you come to file, you come to examples, you come to basics and you open up bare minimum. We always start there. And then we also want to make sure that our Arduino is connected. You can see, yes, I am plugged in. And then I'm going to come under tools and I'm going to look at the port and you can see I have the port selected that has that port listed with the Arduino Uno R4. For me, it's COM5. For you, it might be something else, but you just use the one that is listed as the Arduino Uno. I also like to always make sure that I have the right board selected. So I come down to board and I go to Arduino Uno R4. And yes, I am on the Wi-Fi board. So everything is copacetic. Now, how do I demonstrate with a simple program how you can print to the screen on your computer? Well, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to create a simple counting program, a simple counting program. And so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Well, if I'm going to count, I need a what? I need a variable to hold that value in. And so what would be the type of variable? Well, if I'm going one, two, three, four, five, what would be the best, best variable type to use? An integer. I'm using the counting numbers, the round numbers. So we're hint, hint, reviewing what we learned in last week's lesson a little bit. So we're going to make an int for integer. And what am I going to call it? You could call it kitty litter box if you wanted to, but I'm going to call mine CNT for count. And I'm going to give it an initial value of one like that. So CNT is equal to one. Now, if I am going to print to the serial monitor, I have to set up that serial port. Now, would I want to set up the serial port over and over and over or one time? I want to set it up one time. So where would I put that line of code? I would put that line of code in the void setup. Now, remember the void setup begins with the open curly. It ends with the closed curly. So I need to be between those two curly brackets. Remember this slash slash makes that first line a comment. Arduino ignores it but it just helps us as humans understand what's going on. Little reminders, we can put comments in. <coughs> but what are we going to do? We're going to start our serial port and we do that with serial dot begin. The case is important. Uppercase S, everything else, lowercase. And then what am I going to set my serial port to? I need to give it a baud rate. So I'm going to give it a baud rate of 9600. 
that means that I'm going to be sending data at 9,600 bytes per second. Now you can set it to a lot of different things, but the faster you set it to, the faster you're going to send the data, which is good. It runs faster, but the downside is you can send it so fast that you start losing bytes or losing bits and having problems. 9,600 is kind of rock solid, so we're going to use that. Now who is your friend? Mr. Semicolon. So I have set up the serial port. Now I want to print to it. So I'm going to come down here in the void loop and how do I print? I say serial.print and then what am I going to print? CNT, our counting variable, and then a semicolon. Now if I ran it now, what would be happening? It would just go one 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 very quickly because I need to what? I need to increment my counter. So my counter CNT each time through the loop is going to be the old CNT plus one. So each time it's going to go up by one. If count is one, it's going to become two. If count is two, it's going to become three. And our semicolon. Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. We'll come over here and we are going to run it. Now you look down here and we have an output window and it has completed compiling. It is uploading. Okay, and now it's down uploading and now it is just sitting there. Why? This window down here is output. We have to turn on the serial monitor on our desktop. We started the serial port in our program, but now we have to open up that serial monitor. And that is this little round with the dot icon up here. And if I click on that, boom, I've opened my serial monitor. But nothing's printing. I open my serial monitor, but nothing's printing. What if I try to start the program again? I'll push the button and it will start the program again. What's happening? Absolutely nothing. So Houston, we have a problem. Now what can you see is the problem? Well, we look down here and our serial monitor, our serial monitor has been set to what? It has been set to 115,200. It's listening at 115,200, but I am talking at what? 9600. The Arduino is talking at 9600 and the uh, serial monitor is listening at 115200. Now we could use 115200 or we could use 9600, but both of them have to be set the same. So let's try again here. Let's come. Let's set this at 9600. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close the serial monitor. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this again. So everything is hopefully going to be in sync this time. OK, and now we are going to come over and we're going to open the serial monitor and boom. What's the good news? Well, I'm getting numbers. I'm getting numbers anyway. But what is this 115921593159? It seems like random numbers. It doesn't seem like I'm getting one potato, two potato, three potato. It's, it's, it's random numbers. Well, the good news is I'm talking and listening at the same rate. But what is the problem? Is this counting very, very quickly or is this counting very, very slowly. It's counting very quickly. So the reason I'm not seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, this might be like 1,159 and then 1,593. So you see it's counting. By the time we turn the serial monitor on, the counter was already up into the thousands. So what would we like? We would like to slow it down and we could slow it down with a what? With a delay. So I would come in here and let's say we want to count one potato, two potato, three potato. Well, we would put a delay of what? Of a second, of 1,000 milliseconds. And so I would say delay and then what? 1,000. No, no. What did we learn last week? Tell me what we learned last week. I should never use numbers down in my program. I should use what? Variables. And so what I want to do is I want to set up a variable and let's just call it wait t 
like that. And then if I'm going to use weight T, I need to declare it up here. It could be one millisecond, 700 milliseconds. That sounds like a what? Like an int. So I'm going to do int weight T, and that's going to be, we wanted it what? A thousand, like that. And don't forget the semicolon. Okay, now we're going to run it again. Okay, we're going to run it again. Uploading, that looks good. Okay, now what you can see is I want to clear out all those old numbers. And so if you come right here, I can clear the output. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you see it is counting and it is printing, but now what do we not like? That's kind of confusing because it's what? It's printing across the same line. What do we want it to do? We want to go to the next line each time. We want to go through the next line each time. Now, heads up, always leave your serial monitor on no line ending. Leave it on no line ending. We will take care of the line business up in our code. But this is kind of like talking it to different baud rates. What we need to do is we need to leave the serial monitor at no line ending and we need to put the line endings up here in the code. Now what did I do here? I just said pr print. So it's printing, 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 printing forever on the same line. I need to tell it to go to a new line. And so I'm going to say serial dot print and then ln meaning print it and then go to a new line. So where I have print, I'm going to say print ln like that. Now let's download. I'm going to, yeah, let's download the code again. Have a sip of coffee. That's looking good. <clears throat> now I'm going to clear that output. Four, five, boom. You see that? Nicely formatted, I must say. Nicely formatted, I must say. Okay, now uh, what else do I maybe not like so much about this? There isn't a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> context here. So if a person just walk, walked up, they're not going to really know what these numbers mean. So I want to put a label on it. Okay, I want to put a label on it. So what I could do is I could come here and I could put in another print statement. I could say serial.println and I could print the string your counter is like that. No, no, what is it? I just put a com, I just put a constant, I put a constant string down in my program. Just like numbers, you want to use variables. For strings, you want to use what? You want to use your variable. And so I'm going to use the variable, let's just call it uh, count message for counter message like that. Now, if I'm going to do that, what do I need to do? I need to initialize it up here. Is, this, is it an int? No. Is it a float? No. Is it a char, a character? No, because it's more than one character. It is a what? It is a string like that. And what did we call that? Just to make sure, we called it count, count mess. Count, let's call it count mess. And so I'm going to call it count mess and that is going to be equal to the string your counter is like that okay and a semicolon all right so let's run that ah, what did i do wrong count mess did i count message count mess two s's they have to be exactly the same that's count mess and that's count mess. Try it again. Okay. And clear that out. Come over to the serial mount. Your counter is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, do we like that? What would maybe be a little bit better? Now, this time it might make sense for those two to be on the same line. So how would I do that? Well, when I print, 
when I print the count miss, I don't want to go to the next line. I want to stay on that line. So I'm going to leave this as print. And then after I print the number, then I'll go to the next line. So let's try that. We'll run the code. Okay, now look at that. Two, three, four, five, six. I think that looks really good. So you see, you can get formatted printing by judicious, judiciously using print and print ln commands. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, well let's try uh, let's try some different things now. Okay, so I'm going to come and what I'm going to do is let's say that we wanted to try to just like add some numbers together. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that weight in there, but I'm not going to be doing counting anymore. I'm going to say that I have an integer value x. Okay, and this time I'm not going to give it a value. I'm just going to say I'll be using x. And then I'm going to have an integer value y. Okay, I'm going to be using y. And then I'm going to have an integer value z. Okay, and so I've got three variables, x, y, and z. I can't print them now because they don't have a value. But what I'm going to come down here is in the loop, what I'm going to say is, <clears throat> I'm going to say x is equal to 3. Okay, and then I'm going to say, I did something crazy there. I'm not sure what happened. I jumped up. X is equal to 3. Okay. And then I'm going to say Y is equal to 7. And then I'm going to say Z is equal to X plus Y. Okay. And then I'm going to do what? I'm going to serial print Z. And then I'm going to get rid of this because I'm not doing that one anymore. I'm going to get rid of this because I'm not doing that anymore. And what would be a smarter thing for me to do? It would be a smarter thing for me to print LN so each time it goes to the next line. So let's run this and see what do I know. I know X is 3, Y is 7, and Z is equal to X plus Y. And there we go. <clears throat> okay. Now look at that. It's printing Z, 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 Z. It's printing 10, 10, 10, 10. That's good, but what do we not like so much about it? 10, what? So what? What is 10? Well, what could I do? I could give it more context by coming up here and doing serial.print. This time not print LN, but serial.print. And what am I going to do? I'm going to tell it what X is. I'm going to say print X. Okay. And then what could I do? Serial.print. And then what I could do is do a, I could do a string of space plus space like that. No, what did I just do? I printed a constant. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a new string. And I'm going to put the string as op for operator. And that is equal to an open quote, a space, a plus, a space. Okay. Like that. And then uh, I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to do a string that would be my equal sign. Okay. Equal sign. I'm going to make a string for my equal sign. And that is going to be equal to space equal space because I like to have things kind of spread out like that semicolon. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say print the X, then print the what? The variable operator. Okay, the variable operator. And then I'm going to print what? I'm going to print Y. Okay, and that is not going to print LN. That is going to be print Y. And then what do I want to do? Serial dot print. And what do I want to print? I want to print my uh, my equal like that. Okay. My variable equal. And then I want to do a serial dot print. What this time? LN. And it's going to be Z. Okay. So you see it should now say the X value and then the operator and the Y value and the equal and then the Z. And then let's see what happens. Somebody forgot something. 
<clears throat> serial, ah, uppercase S. I warned you about that uppercase S. Let's try it again. <clears throat> and we go. Done. Okay. And now let's go over to our serial monitor. Three plus seven is 10. Boom. You see that? That is really, really cool. And you see how nicely formatted it is? Because it's like put spaces in there in those operators and around the equal sign. And it came out looking just really, really dandy. Really, really dandy. Okay. Let's do a couple more here. All right. Let's do a couple more. We've kind of been word working with ints and strings. <clears throat> We've been working with ints and strings, but what if we thought about a circle? Okay, what if we thought about a circle? Well, we're certainly going to need pi. Pi is 3.14, so that should be an int, right? No, no, 3.14 would be a what? It would be a float, and that would be my pi. Why do I call it my pi? Because sometimes pi might be like a reserved word, so I'm just going to call it my pi, and that is equal to 3.1415. Okay, like that. Let's just say 3.14. Let's not get crazy with it. <clears throat> so that is uh, float is my pi. We're also going to need a radius. Well, the radius might, the radius of the circle might be one inch. It might be one and a half inches. It might be 3.24 inches. So what should the radius be? It should be a float. And I'm going to say my radius like that. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it uh, two. Okay. Like that. And now what do I want to do? I want to calculate the area. So I'm going to say, and if the pi is a float, 3.14, and you multiply it even by an int, you know the answer is going to be a float, so we need to make it a float, and I'll call it my area, and that is going to be, we won't give it a value because we'll calculate it down in the loop, okay, and then we'll still have the wait time in there, okay, and so now what we are going to do is we are going to probably need a message, okay, we're going to say uh, string, and we're going to say mess1 is going to be equal to a circle of radius, like that. And then we're going to need to make another string, mess2. So you see, I'm putting my strings into constants up here, right, is going to be equal to <clears throat> space has a, has an area of, and then a space. Oh, who's been forgetting their semicolons? I have. Okay. So like that. So now I have a mess and a mess. Okay. And so now I'm going to come down here. And I don't need these things this time. Okay, so you see now I have my pi, my radius, my area, mess one, mess two, and I have the weight. I still start the serial monitor, <clears throat> and then I am not going to do this. I'm not going to do any of this nonsense. So I'm just going to take all that out. All right, so I'm just leaving the weight in. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say serial. First of all, I'm going to calculate the area. My area is equal to pi times radius squared. Right now, the easiest way to do that is just pi times radius times radius. And so that would be my pi times my, did I call it? Yeah, my radius, radius times my, times my radi, radius. Okay, so now I have my area, semicolon. Now I want to print, right? So I'm going to do serial.print, <clears throat> print, and that's going to be mess1, okay? And then what? Serial.print, and what did I say it's going to say? Uh, a circle of radius, my radius, has an area of my area. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So a circle, mess one is a circle of radius. And then what do I put in? My radius like that. And then serial.print. And then what? Mess 
two. Okay, like that. Don't forget your semicolon up there. Okay, and now what? Serial dot print. Okay, and then what? My area. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to print the first message, the radius, the second message, and then my area. Okay, so now let's run that. Ah, what did I do wrong? My radius. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Radius. My radius. My radius times my radius. It was there was the mistake. Okay, try it again. Okay, it's done. Let's hop over here. And what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Look at that. It's going across. What did I do wrong? Somebody tell me what I did wrong. Okay, I did a print, a print, a print. This last one, I should have brought it on home on the last one by doing a print LN so that it doesn't keep printing across. It prints the statement that I want, and then it goes to the new line. So let's try that. Okay, so let's look here. Let me kill that. Okay, a circle of radius 2 has an area of 12.56. Hey, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. Well, what if we just started calculating? What if we just started calculating <coughs> circle areas for different radiuses? Okay, well, what I could say is my radius is 2. That's okay. My radius is two. That's okay. But now what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is down here after the delay, <clears throat> I'm going to say my radius is equal to my radius plus 0.1. Now, can I do that? Yeah, because my radius is a float. So because it's a float, I can add point 0.1 to it. And so now let's run that and see what happens. Uh, who forgot our friend, Mr. Semicolon. I think nine times out of 10 when you have an error in Arduino, it's because you forgot your semicolon. Okay, let's hop over here. And I'm gonna start it again by, by uh, pressing this button. Okay, and so now we're going to start again at a radius of 2, 2.1, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. And do you see how the radius is increasing? As the radius is increasing, so is the area. So it's kind of like I'm calculating the area of all circles from 2 and larger with increments of changing the radius by 0.1. Okay, so you see how it's very useful to be able to print to the serial monitor. What have we learned? We've learned that you always want to use constants, right? You always want to use constants. You want to never you want to use numbers down in your program. You always want to use constants. And that way, if you want to adjust something, you just come to the top of the program and you make the adjustments here. And then everything down below will just be based on what you set up up at the top. And that is very, very useful. So we have learned how to print strings. We've learned how to print floats. We've learned how to print ints. We have reviewed our variable types, prints, ints. Uh, we've reviewed our variable types, ints, floats, and strings. And what we have also done is we've learned the difference between print and print ln. So I would say that we had a pretty productive, pretty productive little session today. I hope uh, I hope you think so as well. So we do need to think about homework. And so what I need you to do for your homework assignment is I need you to go back to your blinking. LED. I need you to go back to your blinking LED program. If you've taken it apart, put it back together. And I want you to have that LED in there. And I want you to have the LED stay on for one second, go off for one second, stay on for one second, go off for one second. And then while you're doing that, I want you on your serial monitor to print the LED is on while it's on and then print the LED is off when it's off. And it should read on while it's on, and it should read off while it's off. 
So you get a visual indication in your serial monitor whether your LED, whether your red LED is on or off. When you, when you do that homework, then make a short video of it showing me your code and then showing me your LED blinking and then showing the text saying on and off on the serial monitor at the same time. Show me that you can bring this thing home and get it all working. Then in your video, link back to this video so anybody watching it sort of knows where you're coming from. And then down below, leave a comment that links over to your YouTube video. So in the comments, I can see that you posted a homework. I'll run over there and look at it and maybe make some comments. Sound good? I hope it does. All right, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. As always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You are the guys that keep this great content coming. Thanks for standing with me. <clears throat> you can also help me by giving me a thumbs up. It helps if you leave a comment down below. It helps me with the old YouTube juice. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. When you do, make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notification when future lessons drop. And always, as always, share this video with other people because the world needs more people thinking like an engineer and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter, with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.